Welcome back to the show. My first guest tonight is an Emmy award-winning host of The Talk and the face of Big Brother. Please welcome Julie Chen. <laughs> Lovely dress. Thank you. It's funny. I had to describe to someone what I was wearing, and I realized when you describe this dress, it sounds terrible. I said it's what like. I said okay, it's like black. I think it's kind of chiffony. It's kind of like picture like a moth, like mothy. And I said I think there's like silver and like gold lame all over it. And I realized it sounds like a disaster <laughs> when you don't see it and you hear it. But it's iridescent spring flowers falling over a midnight sky. No. Not all. Put the words right out of my mouth. Come on. Hey, uh, it's not like we hang out or anything, but we did hang out uh, a little over a month ago at the Lincoln Center, what was it called? The American Songbook thing? Yes, they were yeah. honoring my husband. Yes. And so, Moon um, Moonves, yeah. Yeah, runs uh, this great company. And so, of course, all the great stars on CBS came out. Mm -hmm. It was a star studded night. And I got a chance to meet your son, uh, Charlie. Yes, but I have to be, I have a confession. Okay. Um, I'll get the confessional back out yeah, here. No. <laughs> you know, Look, that night, everyone's lining up. They all want their FaceTime with you. And, like, I'm very respectful of, like, not, like, trying to dominate someone that everyone's trying to talk to. And I thought, I'm going to save my moment with Stephen Colbert to get a picture of my 7-year-old son, Charlie, with you. Oh, I'd so much rather have my picture with a 7-year-old. <laughs> we have the same. We have the same reading level. Well, you know, he's a big Stephen Colbert fan. You remember, you came to our house for a I meeting. Did. Yeah, sure. He met you, and then shortly after, we saw all your billboards, and he was like, "There's Colbert! There's Colbert! Pull over!" My I'm like, "Yeah, I know, I know, I know." So yeah. that night, I'm like, "Okay, I'm gonna go over for my son. You know, parents do anything for their kids, sure. and for the brief moment I had your attention, not because of you, but everyone was lined up." I said, okay, can I please, you know, I hate doing this. And you were so gracious. And I was hitting the video instead of, <laughs> and that's what you did. And I was like, oh my God. And I said, I I'm sorry, back again. I was hitting video and you ended up putting your head down laughing. Well, I just got this. Somebody just handed me the photo as it turned out right there. So there I am. <laughs> so there's Charlie and what appears to be the Bigfoot fleeing a photographer. <laughs> Let me sign and this right here. Hold on a minute. Charlie, I promise this is me. <laughs> there you go. But the right. most horrible part of the story is yep. I soon realize yes. I'm the only Asian who can't operate a camera. <laughs> I think that is a joke that only you can tell. Yes. <laughs> I Thank you very much. Laughing. Thank you very much. I don't even get that joke. Oh, aren't you so <laughs> grand? Now, uh, uh, as we said, uh, your, your, your lovely husband, Leslie Moonves, is the, the boss around here of the, of the CBS Corporation. Do you ever talk about me? Because <laughs> you ever, ever oh, like, my name every ever night, come up or anything? Every night. You're in really? bed with us every night. What? At 11.35. Well, I can't get away from you. A lot of people out there, hopefully. The yeah. yeah. <laughs> All the time. Now, we, uh, we have a pet name for him, you know, at CBS. It's uh, Mr. Moonves. And <laughs> do, you have any, do you have any pet names for I Les Moonves? I do, home? because, you know, my husband's like this tough, gruff guy. He's like a man's man. And every now and then, he um, shows his squeamish side. Squeamish? How so? Oh, no, please. I, I, I don't even want to say anything, because he's going to be like, oh, Jules, oh, 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 oh. And it's things that you would be like, really? Like, I said I'm going to go breastfeed the baby. And he's like, oh! <laughs> you know? I mean, this is what. So anytime he gets that way, I'm like, what's wrong, my little petunia? <laughs> he's my little petunia. OK. And it always makes him I'll laugh. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> Don't. He's Don't, my no. petunia. No petunia? No. <laughs> mm -hmm. no I, call him, I call him Big Dog. The That'll Moon do. Man, LL Cool Les, <laughs> Mr. Chen. Now, you know, someone called him that once. Really? 
You know, it's a compliment. When, when I thank you. When I used to work in news, every night um, they would send the homework to the door, and one day he opens the door, and it was an Asian guy, and he goes, looks him very suspicious, he goes, Mr. Chen, <laughs> and my husband goes, What do you think? And he grabbed the homework, and I was like. Yes, Mr. Chen. <laughs> uh, you started off. Uh, you started in CBS Los Angeles originally. No, I started out in Dayton, Ohio. Oh. At the ABC affiliate. Paying your dues. Paying my dues. Yep. And, and it's great. You know, if you want to work in news, you go to um, a smaller market, and you learn so much about local government. You go to like school board meetings, city council meetings, you know, everything, and um, that's where I, that's where I got my start. But I was an intern in 1989 at CBS Network News, where ten, la 10 years later, I was anchoring the show. Here in New York? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, that was... What did you learn? Because we have interns here. We have interns here. I'm always curious, like, what are they really learning? I want them, because they actually do help to do the show. I want to make sure they're learning something. Like, what did you learn? I'll be the first one to say that I didn't take full advantage of my internship, because, you know, I'm from Queens. I grew up in Queens, and and yeah, it's here for Queens. People in Queens not work hard. I don't understand what you're no, saying. No, it was, and I was like, what do you mean we're not getting paid? You know, like I was very. Oh, that was back in the dark days. That was back in the dark days. Interns right, got paid. Right yeah. before the class action lawsuit. Yeah. But I made a lifelong friend at that internship. Who? Well, I before I tell you who it is, because yeah. I know you know him. Um, I was 19, mm -hmm. and I had a crush on one of my fellow interns. This guy walks in, and he had this beautiful, wavy, dark hair that he wore in a low ponytail, and he had these plastic rimmed glasses like, um, like Elvis Costello, and he wore like Doc Martens and, and like a houndstooth jacket, and I was like, wow, like, this guy is so cool. Then, fast forward, you know who Andy Cohen is? Yes, I'm familiar with Mr. Cohen's I work. know, you know him. He was Andrew Cohen then, and I had a boyfriend in college. And I guess I was always talking about Andrew Cohen, Andrew Cohen. And then one day, uh, my boyfriend says to me, um, hey, Jules, you know, your intern friend, Andrew Cohen, he was a waiter, my, my boyfriend, said he came into the restaurant, and uh, I hate to break it to you, but he was hitting on me. I was the last person to find out that he was gay, apparently. Hey, I got one other thing for you. I know that you, you, you've talked about how uh, on Big Brother, they didn't know that Donald Trump had won the election. They were sequestered while Donald Trump, uh, uh, you know, got the victory. Were you tempted at all to lie to them? <laughs> to say, like, guess what? Gary Johnson had a great night. <laughs> Anything. We're not going to have a president for a while. Like, did it occur I, to you at all? You know, the rules basically of Big Brother, if you're locked in that house, you're right. not allowed to have any news from the outside world. Right. So I didn't even think I was going to tell them who won the election. But then the producers came to me and said, we're going to have you break the news to them. And I'm like, but we're breaking that fourth wall. They're not supposed to have outside information from the outside world. And then I thought, but... Wow, what a moment. Okay. Like I'm go I'm gonna be sure. So I go in, hello house guest, the whole thing, you know. And the drum up, I'm like, how many people raise your hand if you think Hillary Clinton won the election? And I think everybody but one, I think there are about eight people left, raised their hands. So I was like, ooh, this is gonna be a good reaction. <laughs> and I laid it out there and it was so interesting to see. Everyone, A, jaws dropped, and then B, they all looked around at each other like, oh, they're gonna judge me if my jaw is open. Because, you know, politics, once you say how you feel about any issue or any candidate, you've automatically pissed off half the country. So they were like, oh, 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 because they know the cameras are on. It was. It was fascinating to watch. So let me get this straight. So when you're in the Big Brother house, you have no idea what's going on on the news on a day-to-day -day basis. Zero. If things keep going the way they are, are there any openings? Because <laughs> I'm in. I'm so in. Thank you for being here.
The Talk airs weekdays right here on CBS, and Big Brother returns for its 19th season this summer. Julie Chen, everybody.